12 months ago, it was welcome to 1964. There are no pessimists on New Year's Eve. Celebrating somewhere, no doubt, was that king of speed, Donald Campbell, all set for a do-or-die attempt to raise his world record. His wife was at Lake Air to see him do it. No one in the camp would think of failure. 1964 had to be Campbell's year. Sure enough, he succeeded. 403.1 miles an hour. Speed of another kind, the Indianapolis 500 mile, often the world's most killing race, more than living up to its sinister reputation. Going flat out, Dave McDonald hits the wall. Crashing into that awesome wreckage, Eddie Sachs killed instantly. McDonald died later. When it was all over, someone said, that wasn't a motor race, just plain murder. Leatherslade Farm burst into the news as the place where the train robbers hid out till they panicked and fled. Months later came the astounding sequel. Criminals broke into Winston Green Jail and released one of the robbers. In crime fiction, it would have seemed hopelessly far-fetched. Now for some legalized violence in Paris. France and Australia in the decisive test match. A crunching exhibition of organized annihilation. Sometimes there's no short way out of an argument like this. London Airport crowded with teenagers. It means the Beatles back from America. Even by their own crisp standards, the Beatles will always look back to 1964 as a top pop year. For India, the year may have been a turning point. Upon Dr. Shastri fell the mantle of the great Nehru. Vast, uncommitted India prays that he may be able to wear it successfully. Nehru was dead. 74, worn out, he had been chief minister since independence in 1947. No one could quite take his place. At his cremation stood Sir Alec Douglas Hume. India may stay uncommitted, but Britain keeps up with the time, the nuclear and rocket age. At Woomera, they launched Blue Street. Blue Streak itself will help to launch the European satellite scheduled for orbit in two years' time. For the man in the moon, America's Ranger 7 made 64 the year of all time. Back came the closest moon pictures ever taken. For Cupid, it was a terrific year, and very royal. First, Princess Irena of the Netherlands marrying Prince Carlos. No members of her family were present, as neither her parents nor the Dutch government entirely approved of the match. Cupid's next arrow landed in Sweden, where Princess Margareta married London businessman John Ambler. Present was the bride's 81-year-old grandfather, King Gustav. The most important wedding was in Greece, where the young King Constantine married Princess Anne-Marie of Denmark. The ceremony was performed with the ancient ritual and splendor of the Greek church. Lest it be thought that Cupid went wholly royal in 64, there was the marriage of Olympic stars Robbie Brightwell and Anne Packer. Exit Cupid, enter the stork. On leap year day at Thatched House Lodge, a son was born to the very popular Princess Alexandra and Mr. Angus Ogilvy. Congratulations to them both. Princess Margaret and Lord Snowden were blessed with a daughter. Lady Sarah was two months old here on the way to her christening at Buckingham Palace. Whether on his way home the stork has to cross the fourth, who knows? But if so, he saw the new road bridge with its great centre span of 1,100 yards. Fully 100,000 people welcomed the Queen as she arrived for the royal opening. To put the event on record in another way, she signed the visitor's book.
engineered on a scale worthy of Scotland, the Forth Road Bridge is the longest suspension bridge in Europe. The motor age companion of that 75-year-old veteran, the world-famous railway bridge. Traditionally, on election night, anything goes. The spotlight was on Highton, Harold Wilson's constituency. Not that his return was in doubt, but because he might be Premier next day. For James Harold Wilson, 42,200... Harold Wilson emerged as one of the top personalities of the year. But what a year for Nikita Khrushchev. Dismissed when he thought himself completely secure. Popularity deceived him. Now it's no flowers by order. The man of the year, surely Lyndon Johnson. Now the elected president by the biggest majority in American history. Good luck go with him as holder of the highest office in the democratic world. German Grand Prix, and hindsight tells us that there was prophecy in the air at the Nürburgring. A formidable challenger for top honours, driving a Ferrari, John Surti. He won his race, and later in Mexico got the points he needed to become world champion. The Olympics made the sports headlines of the year, and what a heroine was Mary Rand, setting the world record long jump. Gold medal for Mary, not to mention a silver and a bronze. For Ken Matthews, a gold for winning the 20 kilometre walk. Lynn Davis, like a good Welshman, also collected a gold in the long jump. Robbie Brightwell and Anne Packer won themselves three wedding presents, a silver each and a gold for Anne. In Mexico, the Duke of Edinburgh, a great personality in any year, ran true to form. In the garb of the Death Riders, quite at home in the company of those famous horsemen. We never had a finer unofficial ambassador. When the time came, he left Mexico for the Caribbean, by air, of course. There's a fascination about being 20,000 feet up over Farnborough or anywhere. Up here, you can reflect, get your values right, see things in proportion. Who will be the men and women outstanding in 1965? Which nation? Which politicians? Good year or bad? It stimulates thought up here, but you can't stay long. So for 1965, good luck to us all. Let's go down and get started.